All right, well, uh, just mentioned the expansion rate of the conical horn, and uh, here's an illustration can show what we're talking about here. So the, the high frequency driver would be this guy right there. And at, uh, to put some numbers on this, at 20 kilohertz, uh, all of the impedance transformation has happened inside the driver. And starting around about 10 kilohertz, uh, the area in front of the driver starts to become active. And the expansion rate for governing the lower part of the HF driver's response would be this this area in here. And this is this is the rate of expansion. You can see this is very rapid if you were to, to plot the area. But if you went out to this end of the horn and plotted the rate of expansion, it's much slower. So that's the part that I was talking about earlier. So to couple into mid-range drivers, which would be these guys here, uh, the rate of expansion has slowed. And one of the things that's um, not a complication, but more of a more of a, an engineering system, uh, is the sound from the mid-range drivers actually gets into the horn through a number of little holes, the ports you call them. And the, the re what goes on there is you have the driver mounted over the baffle with a hole here. So what you have is the trapped volume inside here, and this is a port. And that produces an acoustic low-pass filter, like a crossover low-pass filter, except this is acoustic. The reason for that is if you've if you low pass the signal going to the mid ranges, which is normal in a crossover, that does not filter out harmonic distortion, which is always two, three, four, five, and six times uh, the fundamental frequency. So the fundamental gets through the electronic crossover, but the distortion is produced by the driver after that. So by putting this low pass filter uh, in front of the driver, you're attenuating the harmonic distortion that the driver would produce uh, as a matter of course, and all drivers produce some distortion. The same rule follows, this is a three-way uh, synergy horn shown here. Uh, so what we know is uh, the distance between here and here is uh, uh, less than a quarter wavelength at the highest frequency that those drivers operate at, and that sound combines into a single source. Uh, at the lower frequency range for those, we come up here where the woofers are, and the same, same relationship holds true there. Uh, at the highest frequency, that spacing is a, a quarter wavelength or less. And uh, so what you get out here uh, the radiation from that appears to be from a single source. And, okay, what is, how do they radiate differently? Well, let's say you had two sources of sound and they were a uh, quarter wavelength apart and you measured the polar plot of that. What you see, it's a, a perfect circle. Those two sources combine completely. If you were to reverse one of the two, they cancel each other out completely. However, if you were to extend that to where this is a half wavelength or more, then what you have is a different, uh, they're independently radiating. If they're the same polarity, those sources produce a figure eight <coughs> pattern that in that direction. If you were to reverse one of the two of those, they produce a figure eight pattern in that direction. So once you're at a, a half wavelength or more apart, the two sources radiate independently. And that's true. Um, let's say you were a, an audience member out here. Well, with independent sources, you have path one, 
in path two to your ear, those are different lengths, and those produce an interference pattern or the cancellation notches, comb filtering. So that's an important factor here. These drivers never produce comb filtering. 